Welcome to the Luminous program on Shalom TV. I am Father Antonello Murgia, working for the Assisi Archdiocese of Toronto, associate pastor at St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Woodbridge, Ontario. Let us start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we ask you to send upon us your Holy Spirit, that we may be able to understand and live the word of life you want to give us today. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today, I would like to speak with you about a key passage of the Gospel of Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. This, as I said, is one of the most important passages of the Gospel, and we immediately understand why Jesus himself says that upon these two commandments, all the law and the prophet depend. Now, this is a question that a lawyer comes and asks to Jesus, and Jesus uses as an answer two statements taken from the Old Testament, which surely were well known by this lawyer. The first one we find in the book of Deuteronomy, and this already at the time of Jesus was considered by the Jewish the most important part of the Old Testament, of the scriptures. The Shema Israel, listen, O Israel, you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your soul. Every pious Israelite was supposed to pray and recite this, this part of the scripture every day. But Jesus joins with this another commandment which is found in the Old Testament, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So putting together the two and showing us clearly that the love of neighbor and the love of God cannot be separated, they stand together. Now, how do we fulfill these commandments on whom everything depends. We all know how, how difficult it is for all of us to love in the way God wants us to love. Love is even something strange to pair with the concept of commandment because we all know that love must be free, that we can't just be told to love and that's enough. Now we'll see, we we'll try to understand why is it so difficult. And what can we do, really? What can we do? Where it is the main point that Jesus shows us through which we can fulfill this word of the Lord. Now, let us start with the second part, which probably is a bit easier for us to understand. Love your neighbor as yourself. We know, and we have, as I've said already, that this comes from the book of Leviticus. And as a context in it. The book of Leviticus says, take no revenge and cherish no grudge against your own people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Clearly, in the Old Testament, the neighbor, the word neighbor, was referred to those who belonged to the people of Israel, the chosen people, the saved people, that were called to be always one to the point that each Israelite should consider the other one, the other member of his own people, as himself. As... But Jesus, as we know, opens up this concept to every single human being on earth. So the neighbor becomes everyone. But this is not just a generic word, because love is a relationship. And I can love someone only if I see someone, if I have a relationship with this person. And therefore, the word neighbor for us really means, especially, those who are close to us, 
the closest, actually. This is the real meaning of the word. And why is it that we are called to love in a special way those who are the closest? Because it's there, it's there that we experience mostly how difficult it is. In fact, in my pastoral experience, I can say that I hear many times people coming to me and telling me, you know, Father, it's much easier for me to love those who are far than those who are actually with me. You know, I go maybe, you know, to the, my workplace or to people that I just see once in a while. You know, we're all kind, we're all good to each other. That's fine, but then when I go home, it's hard. And my wife, my husband, with my children, with the people live with me, it's really difficult. I get angry, I get impatient, I get uh, uh, envious. Uh, I don't know, anything comes out, judgments. How is it that with the people we are supposed to love most, it is more difficult actually to love? It is because really the, those we live with, they show us who we really are. That's why we can understand the real meaning of love. We people are far from us, we all put on a nice mask, it's easy. But then when we are forced to show ourselves for who we really are, then we know how difficult it is. Those who live with us show us who we are, our own limitations. And when we know our own limitations, that we are not really able to love always and fully, it's hard. We get sometimes frustrated, we don't like the way we are, we don't accept really ourselves as people who love only partially. And now we see a key point of this gospel. Love your neighbor as yourself shows that the first point is love yourself. We see clearly that if we do not love ourselves in the way we are, it's impossible to love our neighbor. And in fact, for us, it's difficult to love ourselves, especially when we are not in the way we would like to be. Especially when we see our own weaknesses and sins, we see that we are imperfect, we see our own uh, anger and judgments and frustration. There we see that it's really hard. So we enter into, into a sort of a vicious circle for which we can't love ourselves and therefore we can't love the others. Or at best, we love them in the very same way we love ourselves. That is, only when they are the way we like, like ourselves. And as St. John says in his letter, if you do not love your brother that you see, how can you love God whom you do not see? So in the end, we enter into this problem. We don't love ourselves. We don't love the neighbor. We cannot love God. How do we get out of it? How do we come out of this situation? Here we understand why we need the good news which is brought by Jesus. In fact, Jesus changes this commandment. And when does he change it? He changes, he changes it exactly at the Last Supper. We hear in the Gospel of John this, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. This commandment doesn't change in the parts in which Jesus says love one another. This is basically the same as saying love your neighbor. Jesus is speaking to his apostles and apostles were all neighbor to each other, close to each other. But he says, no longer love them as you love yourself, but as I have loved you. That makes a big difference. Why? Because Jesus has just shown in the Last Supper, and he will show even more in the time to come, how he loves us. He has washed the feet of his apostles. He has told them and pre-announced them that, he would have that they would have betrayed him, and yet he was, giving, he was going to give his very life for them. This is the love that God has for all of us. It's a love for us, as St. Paul says, when we are wicked and sinners. It's not only a love that goes when we are good, when we do things well. It's a love that is full and total. It accepts all our weaknesses, all our sins, all our failures, and still gives his life for us. If I know this love for me, if I know that God has loved me so much that he can take everything from me, 
It takes, let's say, so to say, the whole package, not only the best, the best part of me, the one I like to show to the others, you know, my kindness, my gentleness, but also my, you know, my uh, grumbling, my impatience, my anger, my judgments, my frustrations. He takes everything and he loves it and heals it and, ca and cares for it. If I understand this, then I can even love myself in this way. How? Because I'm great? No, because I'm loved by God himself. That's what makes me myself accept even my own weakness. And if I accept my own weaknesses, then I can even accept the weaknesses of the others, the one who are with me, the one who, of course, by being different sometimes, you know, they cause or they uh, help me, let's say, taking away the worst part of myself. But yet I can say, yes, I'm not better than anyone else. If God loves me and loves my wife, my husband, my children in this way, who am I not to love them in this way? So we see in this way that therefore we can also love our God. How? Because we are grateful. Because it is out of gratitude that we love God. It's not out of effort. It's the gratitude for the one who has given the life for me that makes me love him. In my poverty, in my limitation, I can still love God. So we see that this is true. It's not really a commandment in the proper sense of of the term, the way which we intend as commandment, because it comes really from the love of God. Because we are not, we don't have love in ourselves. God is love. And it's only by knowing this love that we can in turn love ourselves, our neighbor, and God himself. In fact, as St. John says in his first letter, this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as expiation for our sins. We give you thanks, Father, for the time you have given us today, for this word of salvation that you have given us. And we ask you that we may be always strengthened by this Holy Spirit, so that we may love ourselves, our neighbors, and you above all, always. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm very happy to present my greetings to Shalom Ministry and all the good work that you do around the world in fulfilling the dream of the Holy Father that all should hear the love of God. Thank you for your good work and those who support you. May these special days of new evangelization bless your operators, your administrators, and your benefactors. God bless you. Shalom World, God's own channel.